Swadika and good evening. Welcome to Thai BBS World Tonight. You are with Thai Deshiki Tianan and Tulip Next on Pop Lao. Good evening, and of course, uh, people all over the world now are talking about the uh, new variant Omicron, and with Thailand reopening its borders, although not uh, totally fully, uh, but to a lot of countries with hardly any quarantine. Uh, so let's kick start with this update. So the Tourism Authority of Thailand, or TAT, said that there is little sign yet of a slowdown in international arrivals to Thailand, despite. The spread of Omicron in several countries. Uh, as we are reporting to you now, the update is 27 countries worldwide in all of the continents, and. So the TAT is confident that uh, its target of 500,000 overseas arrivals this year will still be achieved. So TAT Governor Yuta Saksupasan said that 93,573 foreign travelers enter Thailand between November 1st and 20th. And although arrivals are still you know, far short of the target when, of course, if we compare to the pre-COVID period, but he to expect more arrivals in December, uh, noting that 300,000 foreign tourists have applied for the uh, Thailand Pass so far. He admitted that arrivals from some of the uh, European countries are slowing due to the resurgence of COVID there. President of the Thai Hotels Association, or THA, meanwhile, uh, Kun Marisa Sukoso Nun Pakti, expressed concern that the spread of Omicron in some European European countries may impact Thailand's tourism sector, noting that Europe is a main tourism market for Thailand. Although the initial impacts may be mild, she admitted that it is difficult to assess the situation going forward right now. And she also said she doesn't want to see any lockdowns being imposed in Thailand and uh, hospitality industry ever again. Yeah, of course. So, oh, I want to. Yeah, the all of the there. businesses, yeah. especially the hospitality industry, are, you know, really desperate for for reopening and for uh, international tourists to come back. Of course. Yeah, and still on the subject of Omicron, Thai medical experts have said that this is likely to be something dominant in the near future. The new coronavirus variant that we call Omicron is likely to replace a Delta variant as the dominant strain if it continues to spread quickly and easily. This is according to Dr. Yong Pu Riawan, the chief of the Center of Excellence in Clinical Virology at Jilai Long Khan University. Thailand's leading virologist said that there is evidence of high transmissibility of the Omicron variant, citing epidemiological evidence from South Africa's, which shows a rapid spread of the variant over two weeks and its emergence in more than 20 other countries. Omicron has developed more mutations in the spike protein than the Delta variant and is capable of spreading at least as fast. And he said that a greater viral load has been found in the throats of infected patients, although the symptoms are mild. Meanwhile, the CCSA is appealing for 252 Thais and foreigners who arrived in Thailand between November 15 and 27 from any of the eight African countries affected by Omicron infections to report to Thai health officials for free RT-PCR tests immediately. According to the CCSA, 255 people flew into Thailand during the period under the sandbox program, but three have already left the country. Of those remaining, 11 have been tracked down and the rest are yet to be located. The Thai government has already banned entry to citizens from South Africa, Namibia, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, Botswana, Malawi and Eswatini, former known as Swaziland, effective from December 1st, which is today. Right. And turning now to 
the Thai government's attempt to revive the medical tourism industry. Uh, new variant or not, we have to move forward. So the cabinet has approved in principle the issuance of medical treatment visas at their meeting. The visa will allow foreigners seeking medical treatment in Thailand to stay for up to one year without having to leave the country for visa renewals in the case uh, if they use a tourist visas, which normally lasts uh, three months. So government WD spokesperson and Russia, uh, Russia Dattina Durek said the decision is in line with the government's policy to promote Thailand as an international medical hub. So, but to be eligible, not everyone would be. Each patient has to provide a bank statement with at least 800,000 baht uh, as proof uh, for all the expenses for their uh, stay in Thailand and also show proofs of a medical appointment that is made at least at least 30 days in advance and an insurance that covers accidents, emergencies, and of course COVID, uh, worth lo no less than 100,000 US dollars. So according to the uh, spokesperson, a foreigner seeking treatment in Thailand currently use a tourist visa, which needs to keep being renewed. And uh, that caused unnecessarily inconvenience to the patient. So the government recognized this and is coming up with this. but. Uh, uh, we still haven't really got uh, the actual time frame yet when this will become um, effective. But at least it is really good news, indeed, uh, for yeah. especially for people with conditions that, you know, uh, take more than three months to to treat. Yep, and uh, it's also something that will boost Thailand uh, medical tourism as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Anyway, let's turn to politics. A former Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand, Suthep Thuk Suban, was granted bail by the Supreme Court's criminal di division for political office holders after malfeasance charges were filed against him by the National Anti-Corruption Commission, or NACC, in the connection with the 5.3 billion baht project for the construction of 396 police stations when he was in office just over a decade ago. Four other individuals and a company were also charged for their alleged involvement at the time when Sutea was Deputy Prime Minister in the government of the Prime Minister Apisit Rechashiwa. Among the other defendants are former police chief, police general Pati Tanpasert and PCC Development and Construction Company. The NSEC decided to take the case to the court after the Attorney General declined to indict them. After leaving the courtroom, Suthep told the media that he has already explained the matter to the NSEC and public prosecutors. The filing of charges was not unexpected. And he said that he followed the regulations in endorsing the project to build stations and police accommodation. The NSEC's case against Suthep concerns only the police station construction. He said that he will cite the Attorney General's reasoning for not indicting him when the case comes to court. The first hearing is scheduled on February 17. All were released on 1 million baht bail each. The court has also barred from the uh, the court has also barred them from leaving the country without its permission. So Tab is best known as the leader of the now defunct People's Democratic Reform Committee or PDRC, the political group that held massive street demonstrations against the Ying Lakshinawat administration in the year leading up to the May 2014 coup. Mm. I remember yeah. that time there was like concert on the street, people camping yeah. out, it's in the heart of Bangkok. Right. As we talked before, right, A any demonstrations, no matter how serious uh, they are, there are always some entertainment. And um, yes, but that was, uh, of course, a long time ago. But court cases work like this. They are quite uh, slow to catch up. So we'll see.
And let's end the program with pop culture with a bit of a political twist. So another Taiwan artist, Si Ta La Wong Gua Zhang, is set to debut in a Korean girl group in January. But her family's history of involvement in uh, political activism in Thailand is actually coming back to haunt her now. So uh, hashtag with her name as uh, Si Ta La in English was trending on. Thai Twitter uh, actually since yesterday, after uh, South Korean record label GLG released photos yesterday of their uh, artists, including her, and millions, if um, I can see correctly, is more than four million tweets. For example, actually called her out, and she's now a member of new group, uh, South Korean go- group called S1 Key. Uh, the way they call Calling her out is that because they identifying her as a daughter of a pro-establishment and pro-military parents, and both of whom are celebrities. So um, she is one of the twin daughters of a TV star and actress Saran Yu Wong Guajang, who passed away last year. But before that, he did took part in uh, political activism uh, over the past uh, two decades, which led to not one, but actually two coups. Uh, if you remember in 2006 against Thaksin Shinawat and 2014 uh-huh. against Yingluck Shinawat. And um, her mother, uh, who still alive, Hatia Ben Wong Bridja, is a DJ who also took part in political activism as well. So when, you know, when one of her family's old photos showing her parents, her twin sister and herself mourning for the uh, passing of the last king uh, went viral, uh, it, it actually came at a time when Thai society is deeply divided. Uh, about the issue of monarchy between royalists and people who are seeking reform to the institution. And most tweets highlighted the fact that Sitala uh, has the privilege of being able to go abroad and follow her dreams, Mm -hmm. comparing her, you know, to other uh, Thais in their 20s who are actually stuck in, in Thailand, you know, with a legacy of coups, for example, and um, especially when compared to a protest leader such as Parit, Chiwarak, or Penguin, or Panacea, or Ru, uh, for, who, who has been, uh, have been fighting for, for their dreams, but are now uh, in prison. Well, speaking of Ru being in prison, um, a bit of update as well, that uh, she's going to be released uh, today. Mm-hmm after her uh, bails for actually four cases were granted yesterday and today. Two cases yesterday, two cases today, and she's out. And well, because of all this drama, some Korean news outlets have also reported about this development in Thailand, but the South Korean group has not yet uh, made any comments. I'm wondering oh how God. much it will send, uh, how much it will influence how mm. the uh, South Korean music house will deal with this situation. Right. There's some people that expect uh, the girl to get canceled from this band, mm. but uh, you have to know that when South Korean going to launch some artists, they spend a big amount of money investing in training and promotion and everything. I don't think they take this decision lightly, but if they right. can cancel. Right, exactly. And, yeah. and the- well, of course, um, the, the group who's um, against what her family is standing for is not uh, all of Thailand, right? So we have a lot right. of sides here. Uh, oh. and, and with each side being so polarized as well. So, Right. Um, the cancel culture. I mean, uh, in Thai, maybe a lot of people know us as uh, Tua Long, where a lot of people just, you know, go comment, bashing comments, right. criticisms against someone over something uh, to with an aim to cancel them. And in English, uh, we call that a cancel culture. Um, and it actually is everywhere in the world. I, yeah, I, I see I, a lot of that in the U.S. as well. So, yeah, we'll see. 
and um, let's see if she gets to really debut uh, the band or not. Well, with that, we wrap up this edition of Thai PBS World tonight, but do catch us like this every weekday at 7 p.m. for all the top stories, explainers, and our commentaries. And don't forget to check out our social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, and also our website, www.thaipbsworld.com. And that's all the news we have for you today, and we'll see you again tomorrow. สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ